So Dr. Jessica, yeah. to educate us a bit about medical concerns that you may have as a physician if someone came to you with hirsutism or facial hair. Well, especially for women, like Renatha said, it's so sensitive, it's so uncomfortable, you don't want to talk about it, but when we look at it medically, women do have some levels of testosterone, and not many know that, but we don't just have as, men, as much as males. And so when some of those levels are elevated, or the ability to maybe keep those testosterone levels decreased, that's when you can have some type of what we call hirsutism, which is, again, that androgen effect mm -hmm. of where you're having the hair growth mm -hmm. like you're seeing. All right, so we got some reasons, uh, medical reasons, so come yes. on over here. Okay. You can follow Dr. Jessica. She's got a checklist that you all need to know about to make sure that the hair growth you may be experiencing is not something called PCOS. We're gonna show what that PCOS is in a second, polycystic ovarian disease. But walk us through the checklist. Yeah, so PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, is actually more common than you would think. It's one of the most common causes of infertility. And so one in 10 women can experience PCOS. And so what those symptoms are, we usually use a criteria, both clinical and through labs, is when they have irregular cycles, Okay, and so when they have that excessive hair growth like we see, we talked about the change in the menstruation, the thinning in hair. Also, we know that there's some belly fat, acne and hair growth, quite uncomfortable. Renata, does any of this resonate with you? Uh, <laughs> three out of five. Solutions, because they're out there. Okay. And the good solutions uh, can really change your life. So walk us through the, the first thing you give someone who you think has PCOS. Yeah, so when women walk into my office, usually they want to fix. They're like, what can I do to help solve this irregularity in my cycle or even the acne and the hair growth? And so for women who are not necessarily doing childbearing or they're not looking to the near future, mm -hmm. birth controls really, pills rather, are really the thing that can help diminish what we talked about, that androgen and that testosterone level and causing it to be bound more than free and circulating in the blood. And therefore you actually get the benefit of one, and obviously contraception, but regulating your cycle and decreasing that testosterone and that androgen level. And then we also have metformin. So metformin is known to be, you can either take it topical, so that means you can apply it, mm. but also orally. So metformin has been known for years to decrease how that glucose and insulin relationship is in the body, and that leads to, again, decreasing that androgen and that testosterone level, leading to, again, regulation cycles and also helping with hair growth. Wow. Okay. I, I would gift you some of these, but I got a better solution for <laughs> okay. you. You got a better solution. Carbs. Yes. Carbs. 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 Yes. Really? Yes. And th th I know, we're not giving oh. them to no. you. <laughs> yeah. they're, not, they're not the My thing we want to Exactly. <laughs> Do you see how excited they got yeah. about the carbs? Perhaps I misspoke. Yeah. All right. So what, what do glycemic uh, carbs have to do with this? Yeah, so when we talk about glycemic index, that's really, as you can see, high and low. Glycemic index, again, is going to increase the amount of sugars and mm. inflammation that you have internally. So these foods here that are in the danger zone, they're in the red, high glycemic index here. You can see that's going to be your white sugars, your white flours, your processed foods, your yellow corn, white rice. Those are things that you want to stay away from. Okay. Now, as we shift a little bit further to our lower glycemic, these are some things that are moderate, okay? okay? So now we're moving more towards where we want you to be. This is the sweet spot right here. Okay. Low glycemic foods, decreasing that inflammation in the body, you're gonna find in your apples, your sweet potatoes, and brown rice. Remember we talked about white rice, yeah. high glycemic? Let's shift that to brown rice for your low glycemic intake. Sure not that. We presented you a couple different ideas. Yeah. Thoughts? So um, I think the metformin sounds like something that might be able to, to help us sister out with what's going on up in here. <laughs> um, and as well as uh, the lower glycemic. Yes, we, we want you to rest in this right, area. Right, the lower here. glycemic the, the, yes. the metformin is something that is so useful for so many people. I think it's worth the effort. Yeah. Listen, yeah. the big message here is don't ignore the clue. Right. Be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss anything. And remember to check back often to see what's new.